of order. In any city, in any country, go to any police department you can get yourself to. Ask the officer at the front desk if you may see the one who calls himself the holder of order. If the officer appears to know of what you speak, then you have come at the right time. If the officer does not appear to know of what you speak, then the cosmos is not in line for this holder at the moment. You will have to come again when the stars are aligned, so that this holder will show himself. If you have come at the right time, then the officer at the desk will give you directions leading to the back of the department. The instructions will be very specific and contain directions that may seem very inconsequential to your goal, almost as if the one giving the directions suffers from obsessive-compulsive disorder. The path laid out in the directions will have you going from one end of the building to the other, doing assorted random things, such as turning pencils sideways and counting the sheets of paper in each printer you pass. I suggest doing these seemingly ridiculous tasks, lest you upset the holder and face the full wrath of the long arm of the law. After completing the annoying and inefficient tasks, you will find yourself at the back of the building, in the chief's office. Sitting there at the desk in the corner of the room will be a stout and muscular man, seemingly in his mid-thirties. Do not let this illusion deceive you, for he is far older than he seems, having existed as long as the objects themselves. He is the holder of order. As you approach him, he will glare at you with his deeply set eyes that seem to pierce your flesh and pry into your very soul. He will know your every sin, your every fault, every weakness, every guilty pleasure, every crime. He may begin to interrogate you, asking of you all these things. If he does not, he has deemed you too tainted to hold his object, and you will have to find a way to remove your taint, or mask it even from the holder, if you wish to have this object. If he does begin, it will be a long and agonizing interrogation. You will be placed under a very hot lamp, deprived of food and drink and subjected to a barrage of questions and accusations so rapid in succession that you won't be able to respond to half of them. He will ask you about every wrong you have committed, and you must answer truthfully, for he already knows. Many are driven to madness or suicide by this interrogation, and the old guilt it digs up. If you manage to survive this ordeal without lying to him, you will be rewarded. If you do lie, your soul will be subjected to everlasting incarceration in a hellish prison, while your body is left to waste away in an earthly one. The reward you will receive from the holder is a large .44 Magnum revolver. With it, however, comes the burden of having your dreams filled with every atrocity ever committed in the name of order. Every act of police brutality, every fascist state's crimes, every genocide shall be the stuff your dreams are made of. The handgun is object 234 of 538. Every shot fired will slay your target, but also the life of an innocent. Such is the price of order 